here we go. Hello everybody, if you've clicked on this video or if you've come to join me, you want to see what I've got going on with Cyber Dragons. Now this is for current format, April 2022. Um, it's an OTK deck, it's a go second, clear the field, swing for game is the basic strategy of it. Um, you'll notice I play cards, uh, just blowout cards like Regeki, Lightning Storm, Harpy's Feather Duster, Red Reboot, something where I can just get rid of things on the field that are preventing me from swinging and go for game. The reason for that is that Cyber Dragon Core by itself is an OTK. Well, I say by itself, but it's Cyber Dragon Core plus any spell or trap, and we'll go over the combo during the games. You'll also notice I do play some of the Cyber Dark Engine. Now the reason for that is that's part of the combo. Um, you really just need the one Chimera. The reason I'm playing two is because I've also dropped in two Small Worlds. And Small World with any monster in the deck will get you a Cyber Dragon Core as long as you still have one copy of Chimera in the deck to banish. So banishing a Chimera off a of Small World, searching Core, using Core to grab the Realm, Realm to grab Chimera, Chimera to grab Power Bond and Fuse from Grave is is the OTK strategy essentially. Um, Cyberdark Claw is a searcher for Realm. You've got a couple of Realms. You've got everything that you need to get your combo off. Um, I'm testing Machine Dupes today because being able to make the Cyber Dragon Infinity first is gonna protect us from things like Nibiru, Ash Blossom, Infinite Impermanence, whatever's gonna stop us. Um, my choices for the side deck. Uh, you'll notice I, I did use a couple of Jizikirus for Problem monsters, I guess. Um, big things like uh, DPE or Dragoon is another problem card that I, I would drop out the destruction cards for him in order to, to deal with. Um, hey, Trunade is going to be one of my outs to um, Eldlich because obviously having more spell trap removal as opposed to monster removal is essential for beating that deck. Uh, Dark Hole has been testing really well against adventure stuff. They don't really have many answers to it besides just using the Griffin, you know, and if you've drawn, but most games you're going to draw more than one card to clear the field, so they're going to have a hard time dealing with that. Your only real tr trouble is going to be dealing with hand traps, um, so that's why we've got the Called by the Grave and the, um, the Red Reboot for handling the Imperm. Now, there's going to be a lot of situations where um, you're going to have to play around one or two hand traps, and the deck can do that. Just because you get hit with a Dash Blossom or just because you get hit with an Effect Veil, it doesn't necessarily mean your turn is over. But you may have to bit to bait that stuff out, or you may have to make the Cyber Dragon Infinity first. Um, the reason why I'm playing, you'll notice over here some Battle Faders. This deck has a hard time against other OTK decks. So if your opponent is making you go first, there's not really a big field that you're going to be able to set up. And then losing to like a Numeron package or something like that, or to, um, to Dragoblion, it, it's kind of not that fun. So the Battle Faders there in case you wind up against another OTK deck. The Ghost Bell and, Sc and uh, Skullmeister are for dealing with Scythe as well as the Imperms and the Chalices. Now the reason why I went with 3 and 3 is because this deck has a really hard time against um, Flounderies. Their ability to summon on your turn and keep summoning and bring out the M-Pen to negate your effects is pretty devastating. So being able to draw into one of these and stop the first normal summon on your turn is going to be key to beating them. Yeah, um, you'll notice my extra deck it seems a little all over the place, but I promise everything here has a reason. You've got the one of Nova and Infinity. I see people playing more than one. It, ideally, you should be winning on your first turn, so you shouldn't need additional copies of either. Also, if you were, even if your opponent were to, to stop the Nova and you get your free fusion summon anyway, you can always revive it off your Cyber Dragon Nashter and then drop Infinity over it anyway. Your Cyber Dragon Seegers, um, that's essential to your combo, and we'll go over that. It's for a couple of different combos, including just being able to get over big stuff. Um, then Chimera Tech Fortress, getting rid of things like Zeus, or any machine really, getting rid of extra deck monsters. Um, not every game is going to end off the first Chimera Tech Rampage Dragon you summon. A lot of times you'll run into opponents who will wait until you summon out the Chimera Tech Rampage before dropping an answer to it. So having three isn't necessarily necessary, but you should be playing at least two. I'm playing the third because it has come up on time, uh, on occasion. 
the Cyber Twin and Cyber End can both be summoned off the Nova, but there are situations you'll run into where a Rampage won't necessarily end the game, but one of these two will. Your opponent having a Zero Defense monster and summoning this off a Power Bond is great, or just being able to summon out a Cyber Twin and run over whatever big monster they've summoned, even if it's something like a Gigantic Dragoon. Your Relinquished Anima, you do play some level 1s. It's nice to be able to get rid of problem monsters that your opponent have put in the wrong spot, or if you end up siding in one of your kaijus, you can also just get rid of a monster, put the kaiju in a zone that where it can be absorbed by anima, and you've now got a free 33 attacker. And search off of Heart's Effect or whatever else you may do. Um, your Link Karibo is going to come up because you have the level 1s. You have your Link Spider in case you get hit by a nib, um, or so so that you can make the, uh, the token, which isn't necessary in this current build because I'm not playing the Anaconda, but I decided to keep it in anyway because it's good against the Jurassic deck. Being able to get rid of that token is pretty pretty good. And then the Al Mirage. Um, there are certain situations where you'll need a Cyber Dragon engrave, like with um, Cyber Repair Plant. You can't activate it unless you have one engraved, so sometimes just summoning out the core, getting its effect, linking it off for the Al Mirage just to be able to activate the Repair Plant is the right move. So with that, let's go and see if we get any challengers. Advanced unrated. I should probably change it to TCG. See if anybody wants to, uh, to have a few test games against me. I like that this deck can catch people off guard because a lot of times your opponents will want to go first. Pretty much every deck does, so the fact that I like to go second means that the Rock, Paper, Scissors game usually doesn't really matter. I like his sleeves. And I'm going to go second. He's got a 48 card deck. I wonder what he could be playing. Not the best hand, but it could get good. Um, being able to draw any searcher or cyber dragon core will pretty much mean that we've got this one. And he doesn't do anything. You know what? Let's just see if we can go for game. Summon out core, declare effect. It's a mandatory effect, so that does come up sometimes, too. He just bricked. Let's see if he wants to actually see the combo. Now normally because I already have the realm in hand I would search something else but because I know he doesn't have anything I'll at least go over the combo with him so that he sees what I do. Grab the realm. Activate it. Declare. Search. We're going to grab the Chimera. Effect of Realm to summon the Chimera. Chimera effect. We're going to discard the Regeki. I keep a Dark Hole because sometimes I want to have a Cyber Dragon engraved, and destroying my own Cyber Dragon does help. Not that it matters in this case, but... Um, power Bond to hand. Link these two. Dueling book needs to catch up. There we go. Make the Seeger. Now, Chimera's effect is going to allow us to um, fuse from Grave. So, Seeger on the field, plus Core from Grave.
makes rampage for rampage effects. I'm gonna pop my own realm because I don't want it on the field. I want my lightning storm to be live, and then his effect is going to send Hertz. And I can do Nashter or Core. In this case, I'll probably do the Core just to have it for next turn. Again, not that it matters because we're going to be ending the game, but we're going to be using Hertz effect to add back the Core. And his attack is doubled because of the power bond. And because of his effect, we can um, we can dump two light machines in order to gain a couple of extra attacks. Um, when I dump, I'm usually dumping either the hearts and the Nashter or the hearts and the core. Because whatever you dump, the the hearts can just add back. Or, I mean, worst case scenario, you can also add a Cyber Dragon from your deck to your hand if you need it. Such as if you were going to play a second Power Bond, because the, the Chimera only gives you the one fusion from Grave during the turn. After that, if you were to fuse again, you'd have to use Hand or Field with Power Bond. I don't think I'm gonna side for this for this matchup. Come on. You know you wanna go first. Now the thing about this deck is I will have the um, the OTK just about every game. There are certain situations where I'll, I'll just open, like, you know, a dark hole, three regekis, and a lightning storm. What are you going to do about that? But probably above 90% of the time I have the OTK. I mean, in this in this hand right here, I have it. The Cyber Emergency plus any spell or trap is game. My only problem is going to be going up against um, hand traps, which I'm not sure if his deck... Is really playing a lot of the fluffles. It, based on his hand last game too, it didn't seem like he was. But who knows? Maybe he's just testing something. Maybe he's just learning the combos. I learned the fluffles a little bit, so I know what some of them do, but it's been a while. I wonder if he's actually going to put up any negates. Cause this doesn't gain anything, right? Nope, neither does this. Sabretooth. Target a Fright for Monster and your Grad. Special summon it. All Fright for his game, 400 attack. And it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects since it was fusion summoned using three or more fusion materials. Okay, that's fine because I can just use Infinity to absorb it anyway. I have the uh, machine dupe. Oh, good. And that was the wings effect. If he controls Toy Bender, he banishes it and a Fluffle to draw a card. And then he can send the Toy Vendor to draw another card. Looks like he had full combo this game. It still really hasn't put up anything super impressive, though.
I mean, sure, he's got a lot of pluses and whatnot, but he didn't really put anything dangerous on the field. Whatever. Whatever. I wasn't really paying attention. I don't know how he special summoned that. But, nor do I really care. He hasn't put up an answer to anything I have in my hand, and I still have the OTK anyway. Three hundred attack for each fairy and fiend and monster in your graveyard during your turn only. Um, when he destroys a monster by battle, send and grave. Or blah 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 blah. When your opponent activates card effect that targets this card, you can match a fight for from the extra deck and negate that effect. And he's got a pot of avarice too. Wow, this is one long turn to summon out a bunch of subpar monsters. So this guy is an attack boost. This guy it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. And this guy stops me from targeting him. And they're all fiends. Okay, easy enough. What is this doing anything? Banish upon blah 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 blah. Fusion summon. If this card sent to the graveyard, attack money you banish, blah 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 blah. Make him feel a little better about himself, I guess. Alright, so first we're going to Lightning Storm. Monsters. He keeps the Sabertooth. I'm still fine. Um, I don't really have a need to summon out the Cyber Dragon, and I don't really want to get hit with the nib for doing so, because that would put me at five summons before my infinity, so I'm not going to. Uh, I'm going to start with an emergency. Grab the core. Oh! Ah. Uh. Cards cannot be added from the main deck to the hand. Um, I mean, it's still game anyway, right? Yeah. We're gonna special two Cyber Dragons. Nova and Infinity. I'm just going to detach everything. And then put everybody back. I 
haven't used Xyz yet in Dueling Book. I'm still kind of new to this whole system. Um, I'm not sure how you're supposed to attach something. Maybe that was just another uh, another thing I hadn't noticed on it. But at any rate, I've got the power bond, to grave, and to grave. Make the rampage. Declare rampage effect. Sending hearts. And I'll do core again. Now, Droll and Luckbird is definitely the best hand trap to use against this deck. I just happened to open the Power Bond, which is nice, which is the reason why I play more than one, even though it's very searchable in this deck. Um, being able to have the Power Bond and not having this have to search it out prevents you from being stopped by things like Droll, Ash, Imperm, Effect Veiler. Lightning Swarm's a strong card. Um, I did try testing it at three, and it honestly just didn't work out. The whole once per turn thing, I, I just find that one seems to work just fine, especially since I do also play a Harpy's Feather Duster in the deck anyway. Let's see if King Roman Reigns wants to play. I like his sleeves too, the Morphing Jar. That's cool. All right, King Roman Reigns, I'm going second. And now, I don't have spell trap removal, which could be a problem. Um, I do have the OTK, because I have the Cyber Dragon Core, that's all you need. Um, also, a Cyber Dark Claw and... Um, no, yeah, a Claw plus any, any Cyber Dragon monster would also do it. Yeah, you're good. Do whatever you want. I have no idea what's happening. I don't know what these guys are. Oh, he's playing uh, the Faco Gods. Ham on. Hmm. If this card shows opponent sponsored by battle, inflict 1,000 damage to your opponent while it's in face up defense position. I have to attack him. He has 4,000 attack. That's pretty solid. Ooh, big boy. Alright, um, I mean, I don't need to dark hole him, and so I won't. I'm gonna normal summon the core and get my effect. If he's got a hand trap, I'll probably play it now anyway. And he doesn't. Now, I don't need to search out the, um, the Cyberdeck Realm because I can also always just search it out with Claw. So we're gonna grab something just in case he has an answer. Um, I'll grab one of the um, Cyber Emergencies. You know, before anything else though, I am gonna play the Machine Dupe because I wanna have the peace of mind of having the Infinity on the field and being able to do whatever I want.
What does he mean? What? <laughs> Is there an effect I missed, or is he just being stupid? I can't tell. Anyway, we're gonna use Claw's effect. We're gonna grab the realm, wherever that is. I think the realm. Add the chimera to hand. Realm second effect. Normal summons the chimera. Chimera's effect. Discards dark hole to search at the power bond. Make the Seeger so that we have the second Cyber Dragon for Power Bond. We're gonna banish Core, send Seeger to Grave, summon out Rampage. Rampage effect. It's gonna pop Realm since it's no longer useful. And we wanna clear the field in case we get a Lightning Storm. And then use this other effect. Hearts to Grave and Core to Grave. Can't type today. It's okay, man. I can't read either. Actually, under here, is that how I'm supposed to do it? Yeah. 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 What a weird guy. Meet all kinds of characters on Dueling Book, huh? See if uh guess I'll just host see if anybody wants to play. King Roman Reigns is back. What if I just go and challenge him? That'd be funny. I really don't want to play against him again, though. People playing on DB today, huh? Right. 
or at least not an unrated. Maybe more people would be playing underrated. I wanted to give people the opportunity to challenge me if they wanted to, but maybe it's better to just play against whoever. Yeah. I guess I may as well just let the system pair me up with whoever. It's him, Troll Despair, huh? It's a shame I have the machine dupe with no targets for it, but it's still a decent hand. Yeah, it's good. Sorry, my bad, dude. Dinomorphia. Send a Dinomorphia card from your deck to the graveyard. Fetch your Trevor Battle card effect. Banish Trapping Graveyard. Special summon a level 4 lower Dinomorphia from your graveyard. Accept him. You can only use each effect once per turn. Hey, I got the red reboot. Alright, buddy. You're in trouble now. Um, maybe. Right? Yeah, I should have... I need a second... Um... Yeah. I don't have a way to summon out a second Cyber Dragon to be able to use the Power Bond, though, is the problem. So I don't have the OTK. Hmm. Do I deck thin? Do I just hand? You know what? I think. I'm gonna end turn because I don't think he can OTK me. And even if I can, or even if he can, just let him earn it. A thousand damage, whatever. That's well worth being able to draw another card and hopefully get the ODK. The red reboot's really nice. Makes me confident, unless he's got a solemn judgment down. Hey, there it is. Okay, so we'll start with a realm. Hmm. Pay half my life. 3,500. And he's gonna pay half his life again. Oh. Nice. Okay, so this is gone. I don't get my search, I don't get my power bond. Hmm. I mean, I could have called by the grave dip, but whatever. Hmm. Yeah, the fact that he had solemn judgment kind of stinks, huh? I think he's got this one. Yeah, dude, just do it. What is that? Yeah. Alright, we can go to the next game. Hmm. He's got a ton of back row. Hey, True Nade would probably be really good. I don't need to be playing all this monster hate. I think more back row hate's gonna be more appropriate. Um, I mean, what else would be good against him, though? He's got, like, effects that activate engrave. None of that is really gonna hurt me, though, is the problem. The only things that really hurt me is his massive amount of back row. So I'm absolutely gonna be putting in the hate runeade. Trying to figure out...
what else might be good? You know what? That's probably fine. Maybe I should be playing more back row hate. In the uh, in the side deck at least. I was testing twin twisters in it for a while. But like blind shotting the twin twisters, I don't know if it would have necessarily been good in that game. I mean, I have Cyber Dragon Core, which means I have the OTK unless he stops it. But the amount of back row he's playing, though, it's... Unless I draw something that handles um, interruptions like the Red Reboot or Hatronade or something or Lightning Storm, I'm going to be in trouble no matter what. He's got the thing that lets him fuse. Hmm. And he's got Lord of the Heavenly Prison anyway. Hmm. Oh my god. This guy's annoying. Did we know what phase I'm in? You can just click the thumb button instead of saying sure, you know. Okay. Come on, summon for the activation. Torrential. Torrential's fine. Gonna summon out Lord of Heavenly Prison, right? Okay, so you can't play the Ice Dragon's Prison yet this turn, then that's fine. Alright, um. Hey, he found the thumb button. I should take the hearts just in case. And I'll grab a Nashed or two. I want to make sure if this goes to next turn that I'm all set up. I'm gonna do a rampage chain link one, hurts chain link two. Tough to pop those two. This is the one that lets infusion summon. Being able to fuse from deck is just really strong. I don't know what any of his fusions do. I 
Um, during the main phase, quick effect, you can pay half your life points and banish the Dynamorphia normal trap from the graveyard. As effect becomes that trap effects when this card is activated. Okay, so we'll be able to do that again. Um, to hand, um, I'll grab the Nash to the hand. Send two. I'll send a core, and I don't want to send a cyber dragon just because I want to be able to have targets for machine dupe. Probably just another Nash there. Okay, and I don't have a way to summon out another monster, I don't think, so he is going to survive this turn. Um, yeah, I don't see a way around it. I didn't even realize that got sent to grave. Was that one of these guys' effects? Um, okay, whatever. Hmm. I guess. Man, getting rid of these guys is a pain. Oh, you know what card would be really good against this deck? Evenly matched. That's what I forgot to put into the uh, into the side deck. Let's get this one. We'll go back to the deck constructor. I ought to be playing evenly anyway, just because um, Eldritch is super popular right now. I really, I'm not completely sold on him, but I'm not sure. This stuff I'm sold on. This getting out of the scythe lock is nice, but this stuff also stops scythe. So maybe these aren't super necessary. The evenlies will probably be better. The dark hole is there in case I run up against adventure. Um, you know what? Dropping one of him for the third evenly might be really good. Let's try that. That way, if I run up against someone else who wants to swarm the field, I can at least punish them for doing so. And we'll try again. Ready. I think that was my first time playing against Dynamorphia. A lot of words on those cards, a lot of stuff to read. Uh, did this guy queue up just to not play? What a dummy. It says I'm supposed to be in a different duel. I don't know what's going on. Maybe the game was just lagging, who knows. Yeah, dude, do whatever. I have the OTK, I've got Power Bond and two Cyber Dragon monsters, I've got a Dark Hole to clear the field. Um, don't really have an answer to hand traps or back row yet, hopefully get something. 
Hmm. Well, I do have the feather duster, but he didn't set anything. Hmm. I'm thinking I can just emergency and go through the motions of grabbing the um, the Cyber Dragon core just to try to bait out any hand traps he might have. We'll just go through all of it then. Maybe he'll stop something along the way, maybe he won't. favorite things about this deck is that the combo goes off on four summons so your opponent won't be able to nib you. And I do have the second power bond anyway just in case he does have an answer but And with this hand, let's send the core. I have no idea what he's playing, so there's no point in signing anything. Either he bricked or he was waiting for the fifth summon to drop a nib on me, I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe. Maybe we will, maybe we won't, I don't know. No, yeah, even though I had the OTK immediately due to the two Cyber Dragons and the Power Bond, I would rather go through the motions of doing the rest of the combo anyway, because if he had an Ash or an Imperm or an Effect Veiler, I would rather he uses it on the Cyber Dragon Core or basically anything else rather than... Oh, um, I'm going first. Rather than having him hit the, uh, the Rampage Dragon with any of those effects. Um, I mean... We can at least put up in a gate. With how well Machine Dupe's been doing, I've been really, really considering doing another. Um, we're going to overlay these guys, that's what we're doing. And then Hertz, I can make a Link Kribo so we have a defense against a uh, an attack too. Search, add the third Cyber Dragon. So we have another target for Power Bond and we don't have to worry about um, drawing into what would be the Brick next turn. And I guess that's it. 
I don't have any spell trap removal. There's a lot left in those 32 cards, though. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna sit there and negate the terraforming off the uh, infinity, I don't think. If anything, I would negate whatever he activated. I wanna see what it is first. Mystic Mine. Oh, Playing one of these stupid decks. Um... Touch Nova, we're gonna get rid of that mine. Yeah, I haven't played against Ignister in a long time. They all lock you in a cyber, so I remember that. Well, Reborn does. and it locks you out of whatever attribute you use to summon. I mean, I don't have any answers to whatever you do, so whatever you're gonna do, just do it. My only other answer left is Link Karibo. Meant to Cyber's monster effects too. So he's locked out of fire for his field spell. And fire in dark now. My deck definitely struggles with going first, but as long as he doesn't win this turn, I think I'm fine. That could change if he just sets a whole bunch back row, though. But I do have the Regeki. I have whatever I need for the OTK. I mean, I'm in good shape. Plus, I still get a draw, too. Oh, I didn't realize. Yami yeah, Ascending. Hello. Sorry, I missed you there. I was so focused on my game. Yeah, dude. He summoned a fire and a dark off the field spell so far. Oh, well, thank you. I uh, I started playing Cyber Dragons back in October, um, so I did have a lot of time to work on this deck. I, I've been playing this one in Adamant's Paters on and off at Locals. Um, I usually end up with a record of either 4-1 or 3-2. We usually have five rounds. Um, so it's it's still a work in progress, but it's, it's a fun Tier 2 deck. I'm just... I have, I've only played against this deck a couple of times, and it was like a year ago, so I've been like trying to keep up on reading these cards, but oh man. What's Transco Attacker do? Special Ah, he's thinking. Okay. I want to make sure he wasn't, like, waiting for me to do something. I assume he's probably going to go into an access code talker 
and try to swing for game, maybe? No, I have no idea. Oh, right, he's... He's, I know he's locked into uh, Cybers. They can only control one arrival per turn. His attack becomes a thousand times the number of link materials used for its link summon, unaffected by other card effects. Uh, once per turn, you can target one of the monsters in the field, destroy it, and if you do special summon and add Ignister token to your zone, this card points to. So he summoned wind, yeah, light, yeah, he's good. He summoned wind, fire, dark, and light now off the field spell. Master Starly, what's going on? Thank you for joining us. We're uh, learning about adding Nisters. I, I ended up um, winning the first game of this match. Uh, he, he didn't even play a single card. He went first, ended his turn. I opened with the OTK. Um, he forced me to go first for the second game. Um, I made the Infinity and the Link Karibo negated his mystic mind and now he's just kind of been popping off since then long long combo but i'm hoping he's nearing the end of it i'm hoping i can just drop a regeki and swing for game on my turn but we'll see i don't know if his deck plays a lot of back row or not so he makes this a level four and goes into He's only locked in the cyber, so what can he make? The light dragon. If a monster you control will be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can detach a material instead. Um, you can detach a material, destroy face up monsters your opponent controls up to the number of Adignis monsters you control. When another cyber spawns, blah blah blah. Okay, so this goes to grief, that's fine. Oh. Yeah. He gets to destroy both. Whatever, he's got 53 on board, so I think I'm fine. Yeah. I don't have the nib. He was afraid of Nibiru. Do we have the one of these attack more than once? No, right? Take the 3k. Now, because this monster's in the... What's this guy do? Oh, special summon a lake monster from your graveyard. Oh, man. What does he have in here? That's still not enough for game, anyway. It gains 500 attack, yeah, so... That is game. All right, I guess we'll go into game three. That was a long turn. Man. So I'm obviously going to make him go first. I don't really see anything in his deck being a threat. Because his monster was in the extra monster zone, even though it's unaffected by the card effects, I can summon out any of my cyber dragons and just contact Fius with it. So it doesn't really worry me. I didn't. I don't see him playing any back row or anything. Um, debating if I should take out the feather dust stuff or something. He is playing an OTK deck, so maybe Fader might be a good idea, but he's going first anyway, so I should be able to just swing for game. Um, you know what? Yeah, let's just... Uh, I think I'm fine. As long as I'm not going first, I, I, I'll win just about every game. Unless he just draws into three or four hand traps. That's going to be the only way he's going to... Yeah, just play. It's your turn. Playing Starry. Yeah, Infinity Effect was used on the um, Mystic Mine right away. It seems like a cool deck. I don't know. I don't really know much about the deck. Um... It seems like a pretty cool OTK deck. I am siding through Battle Faders just because OTK decks are my own weakness. I My deck doesn't like to go first. I like to be able to just go second, clear the field, swing for game. So just being able to survive the one turn against my opponent is usually enough for me to, uh, to win. 
And the only decks I, I really struggle against are ones that will put up a bunch of negates. But, I mean, I can usually play through at least a couple and still swing for game. Like, I, I have several ways to get to game with my current hand right now anyway. Um, I have the Cyber Emergency plus any spell or trap is enough damage for game. I have a Power Bond plus cards to search for whatever I need. I have the Cyber Dark Realm to be able to get the Chimera to be able to fuse from Grave, search a Power Bond, get an extra Normal Summon, make a Seeger. So I have a lot of options to get around whatever he summons. Yeah, there's the Mystic Mind too, so keeping in the Feather Duster and the Lightning Storms is probably the best option, but I don't know. I don't know how many mines he's playing, or is he going to full combo first and then mine? He wouldn't do that because it would just lock him out of his own effects. Yeah, dude, just do whatever. Do whatever you're going to do. My only problem with Ignesters is their turn just... His turns take so long, man. Like, even when I'm not interrupting, he's just going, 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 going. I can see why this deck would struggle against, like, a Nibiru. I feel like a single Nibiru would just put the brakes on his whole turn once, once he's used up his field spell. I mean, what does the deck do for a follow-up anyway? It seems... OTK oriented, does he set a bunch of back row? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Oh, I know, right? Ugh. Or if, you, if you're if you up against one of those players who's just super slow anyway, where it takes them like 30 seconds just to resolve a single effect. Imagine someone like that playing this deck. You go like 35 minutes into game one. I don't even know where he's at in his combo right now. So he used the field spell on wind and dark. I think he just normaled the light. I mean, they seem to combo off pretty consistently. He didn't do anything the first game, though, so he he did break at least one of our three games, so I don't know if I trust the deck. Oh, Mine is just super irritating. You know what? I really... I really ought to just make room in the side deck for some uh, for some twin twisters because I do run up against mine players at locals too and it's super irritating when you're just like draw a card go and then they go draw a card go and you're just you know eight turns deep into wanting to draw your one up feather duster or a lightning storm or something and you just uh, want to get rid of that stupid card yeah he also stops to think a lot you're right He's got to be just learning this deck because he, he hasn't mastered his combo. I mean, I feel like if you're playing a deck and you're just being able to solo play your cards uninterrupted, you should know what path you're going to take. It seems like he's just doing the next move and summoning the next card without really knowing where his combo is going to end up and just hoping to find it along the way. I mean, I guess that's the way it is when you're first learning a deck, but... I mean, I've been playing Cyber Dragons for, like, you know, six months now. So when I open a hand like this, I know exactly which paths I can take. I know exactly what I'm going to do depending on what my opponent does. I don't have to sit there, play Small World, think about what I'm going to banish, think about what I'm going to use to a bridge, think about what I'm going to use to search. Like, I know exactly what to do here. You know, like, for example, if I were, if I didn't have the Cyber Emergency and I needed the core off the Small World, I know Small World to Cyber Dragon to Cyber Dark Chimera to Cyber Dragon Core. You know, like, I don't have to stop and say, think, you know. He's several minutes into his first turn, and it's and he's been playing uninterrupted. Mind when he was at 1,600 life points? Oh! <laughs> I guess that's the benefit of playing a stupid deck like this. 
I either win on the first turn or I lose on the first turn. Absolute glass cannon of a deck. But it is just annoying when you sit there and have to play against someone who's super slow like this. Unaffected by other card effects. This guy, he doesn't threaten me at all. I can just special Cyber Dragon and contact fuse him away and it's no problem. Is he gonna mine? Hmm. All right. Cannot activate monster effects or declare an attack. Hmm. Well, I can literally just power bond for game then, right? Yeah, that's, that's what I think I'm gonna do. We're gonna start with power bond, right? Use the two cyber dragons. What does this guy do? Does he do, do anything else once per turn? Okay, so that's not during either player's turn. What can you do? You can't mine. Is it only on field? That's really cool though. That guy has a built in the gate from Grave. I can see why it would be easy to forget, but I'm deliberately trying to play around your mind here. What else does he have that negates stuff? This guy negates, what, a spell? One face-up card your opponent controls. Um, while you control a Link 6 monster, you can banish this card from your field or grave target face-up card. Your opponent controls negate its effect till the end of the turn. Yay, he's going to let it go through. Now, I'm thinking if I summon out a Cyber Dragon and just contact Fuse, he might get smart and try to chain to negate the Rampage Dragon. So I'm going to try to bait him out. I'm going to add the Quarter Hand so when I summon him, his effect activates mandatory and see if he negates it. He says it's good. So I am going to grab the repair plant. Because I've already played an emergency, it's once per turn, and I already have a realm. Admitted defeat. Oops, GG. Didn't mean to do that. Yeah, the rampage being at 42. I hadn't used the effect yet to gain the extra two attacks, but I think he realized at that point that unless he had something in hand to negate, that I was going to get that one. Oh, sorry, I was <laughs> totally not reading chat. I've got it on the second screen here. Um,. Let me catch up real quick. 
yeah, the negate for after I pop mine. That's the thing is, I knew he had the negate, so I wanted to try to bait it out so that he didn't use it on the rampage, you know, so I wanted him to use it on the core anyway. But I, I kind of forced his hand anyway in summoning out the core because I just contact fused the way his, his link six, so he wasn't going to be able to, um, to negate it anyway. Um... Yeah, negating the card, I, yeah, that's that's a good point. My thing is, though, just being able to contact fuse it away was, um, was going to be what won me the game. Because I think for the Ignister guy, I have to activate the effect and then he negates it, or can he just do it? I'm not, I'm not sure. That's a that's the thing with this deck, is I, I almost always have game in hand. It's just a matter of either trying to clear the field or trying to play around the hand traps or just baiting things out, you know? And Cyberdyne Core is something that a lot of people just want to get rid of. Things like Nib don't really bother me too much. Um, because I can OTK off four summons. But the, the cards that really bother me are um, Effect Veiler, Ash Blossom, Infinite Impermanence, and Ghost Ogre. If I'm playing against someone real smart and they wait until I summon out the Rampage Dragon and then Ghost Ogre its effect, that's pretty devastating. And unless I have the second Power Bond, I'm probably not going to win that game. The, this deck, it's, it's pretty solid, but it definitely has its weaknesses, especially a lot of the hand traps that are played in the current meta. Infinite Tracks. I used to have a friend who played this at Locals. Um, it's been a while since I've seen him. It's a cool deck. Yeah, honestly, dude, you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to Feather Dust the Regeki, Normal Summon Cyber Dragon Core for game. So unless he's got a hand trap, I I think I'm in good shape. Although, I don't know. Do these guys put up big negates? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Let's have a duel after this. I'll I'll go into just the uh, the unlimited unrated, and I'll sit there. I'm curious to see what you've got for me. Although, you know what I'm playing. You know that uh, <laughs> you could just make me go first, and I'll probably lose. When this destroys the opponent's monster by battle, you can attach it to this as material... You can detach one material from this card, take an earth monster from your deck, and add it to your hand or send it to the graveyard. And if this card's in your graveyard, you can tribute a machine link to special summon this card in defense. 25 attack, 500 defense. Two level fives. Your deck goes first? Oh, perfect. We should have a match, too. That way we can really test out our side decks. Um, before our game, though, I might want to make a small change anyway. I really got to fit in the Twin Twister somehow, because Mystic Mine is just super annoying. I am main decking the one Feather Duster and the two Lightning Storms. But, ah, uh, I just... It's awful when you know you've got three outs and, like, 28 cards left in your deck and your opponent's just got a Mystic Mine up. I, it's it's the worst feeling. Uh, yeah, I have no idea what your card does, but it doesn't really matter. That's also one of the things I love about um, the Cyber Dragon deck is I don't have to... I, I mean, I like to read the cards just so I can learn the decks, but I don't have to. My opponent can just full combo no matter what, and I can just be like, Feather Duster, Regeki, Normal Summon, Swing for Game. It's, uh brain lit deck. I only need to know what my own cards do. Trying to find out an engine to make my deck consistent. Hmm. Well, maybe once I uh, play a few games against you, I'll, uh, maybe we can come up with something. I'm sure. Is it a secret what deck you're playing, or are you going to share? You know, I, I kind of like surprises. Let's, uh, let, let's keep it a surprise. I'm sort of new to dueling, but I mean, I made my account a long time ago and played like a couple of duels and just wasn't really that into it, to be honest. Um, because I was playing YGO Pro Dawn of a New Era where everything's automated, but the servers on that have been super crappy and even being able to log in or not, it's, it's really hit or miss. So, um, dueling book has been a good substitute. Oh, oh, and you were already going to tell me what it is? Ah, you know what? I'll find out. I'll find out in a minute. 
Or maybe a few minutes if this guy's turn doesn't end. Jeez, come on, man. First game, first turn. I'm dying of boredom over here. Ah, school computer, huh? Are they uh, super slow? Can they handle dueling book? It's been a while since I've been in school. I remember school computers trying to play uh, Bloons Tower Defense 3. You couldn't even get through, like, once you're on, like, level 30, they, the computer just can't even keep up, you know? Are they that bad these days still? I have no idea what's going on. I lost track of his effects a while ago. He's another one who's sitting there thinking, come on, man, it's your own deck. I'm just surprised people play in rated and don't know their own deck combos. I feel like you should be playing in unrated to learn your deck, and then you go over to rated after you know what you're doing, right? But maybe that's just me. Quick effects. Send a monster from hand or field to the graveyard, target level 10 machine and graveyard, special summon and defense negate its effects in a... It's in the graveyard, you send a card from your hand to field to the graveyard, special summon it. Oh, so you can't install your own program, so yeah, you're kind of just stuck with this anyway. Hey, he summoned a bunch of back row for me. I also realize now that they're all machines, so I could just contact field his fuse away. It, contact fuse his field away anyway, no matter what. But let's see if he has an answer to the feather duster. If he doesn't, he's in big trouble. Oops, sorry about where I made phase one. Think on chain. Target a machine monster you control, special summon a mocking it with a different name from your hand or deck, and if you do destroy the targeted monster, banish the card from your graveyard, target three your machine monsters that are banished from your graveyard, shuffle them into your deck, then draw a card. You can only use one effect and only once during that turn. Oh, good. Um, quick effect. You can target one machine monster you control, destroy that monster, and all monsters your opponent controls will attack less than and equal to it. If a face-up earth machine monster you control accept Citadel, destroy by battle a card effect. While this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon this card. You can only use its effect once per turn. Okay, that's easy enough. Um, I don't think he plays Nibiru, so I will do my five summons and try for game. Okay, on summon. He is going to use Citadel's effect, smart man. Ah, he knows what he's doing. You'd be surprised how many times I'll be like, special summon Cyber Dragon against Zeus, and the person's just like, okay. And then I'm like, contact fuse away. I mean, unless he's playing a, um, a hand trap, I have game. Oh, no, he is. You son of a gun. Hmm. Is there anything I could draw, I could go for with my repair plant? No, I don't think so. I think he's just in really good shape right now. Even if he kills the core, though, I can then use core effect on my turn and try for the OTK again. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. We'll repair plant to grab another core from deck, actually. I still have the regeki anyway. Man, I wasn't expecting the Veiler. A Yu-Gi-Oh player going into me. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's all I have for him. <sighs> if I had opened with a power bond, it would have been good, but... I mean, if you really want to take the 400 damage, but I don't actually care. It doesn't matter.
because either I'm swinging for game all at once or I'm just not, you know, the pokes. I, I, I don't think I've ever won a game just poking an opponent down with this deck, and I'm definitely not going to against his deck. That's the thing with going into any new card game, though. Um. Yeah, you know what? If you want to play now, let's just have our game. Is your name on Dueling Book Master Starly? Starry Knight. Okay, well, I'll keep an, a lookout for you anyway. But yeah, I mean, any new card game is gonna, gonna be a challenge to get into, both in terms of um, learning the rules as well as reading all the cards and getting caught up. I mean, think about it. When did you get into Yu-Gi-Oh? You know, you, you've had a lot of times to get caught up on the older cards and then learn the new stuff as it comes out. I mean, I guess if you're playing um, all the new stuff in Magic, you only have to learn the newest few sets, but it's... It's still... it's. It, there's a lot of things with learning other card games that aren't super obvious coming from Yu-Gi-Oh! Just because of, like, the difference in, in the way things work. Like, I played Force of Will for a while, and the biggest thing that... Um, oops, I'm going second. The biggest challenge for me was relearning the battle phase. Because in Force of Will, you can attack with a monster, and then go back to play another... Um, spell card and then attack with another monster so there wasn't um, main phase one battle phase main phase two it was more like main phase battle phase main phase battle phase so attacking playing cards attacking playing cards it um it, there was more strategy in deciding when to attack instead of i'm in battle phase i have to attack now you know Yeah, it's, it, it doesn't really matter. That's that's another beautiful thing about this deck. It, like, it's it's almost like the dummies deck. Like, it, it doesn't matter if you know what's in my hand. It doesn't really matter if, if you know what I'm doing. I mean, sometimes I might try to bait something out against you, but the majority of the time, I either have game or I don't. You know, I'm either going to be swinging for game or not. Like here, I do have lethal. Um, I do pretty much every game. The downside is you're going to have answers. So that's... That's just where I'm at. Do I have... Am I going to be able to stop you? Or are you going to be able to stop me, rather? Um, I think in this scenario, I'm going to start with the power bond. Unless you got an answer. Well, if you bricked, I'm not going to complain, I guess. We're going to... Fuse the Hurts and the Cyber Dragon. And I'm going to use Rampage. And Rampage's effect is going to attempt to pop these two on summon. Um, he's, that's Chain Link 1, and Chain Link 2 is going to be Hearts. Special summon a level 7 from your hand, okay. So then, um, his effect's going to be on the next chain then. So uh, next I have Hearts' effect's going to resolve, grabbing a Cyber Dragon from deck. And then uh, Rampage Resolves popping, and then your monster resolves, which targets a card in the field destroy. I assume you're targeting my Rampage. Rampage to Grave. Okay, what else does he do? Once per turn, at the start of damage type, if the card attacks a monster, you can banish a monster to the end phase, and this card can make a second attack. I've played against this deck once. I feel like it was a while ago. Um... 
At any rate, what was your other face down card? Saturday Night Blast. When your opponent activates card or effect, return a level 7 light dragon you control to the hand, then a solemn judgment set, huh? I hope you don't have another one of those set. Let's uh let's go with the cyber emergency. What do you got for me? Emergency's good, alright. We'll go core to hand. I'm in a a tough spot because like it's one of those oh I wish I had just one more card in my hand kind of deals um, because then I would be able to play around whatever you've got being able to summon out the uh, the Cyber Dragon Infinity but right now I can't I can't summon out both the infinity and go for the OTK so it's kind of like a which do I want to do kind of deal um in this case I think I'm just gonna go for game summon out the core and uh activate its effect well it's a mandatory effect on summon anyway but how are we looking he's good all right realm's gonna go to hand activate the realm and get a search Realm's going to search Chimera. Activate Realm's second effect to gain an extra normal summon of a Cyber Dark this turn. And then, um, anything on summon? Next, I will activate Chimera's effect. It, the discard is not for cost with Chimera. Search for a power bond, and I gain the ability to uh, fuse from grave once this turn. All right, now I've got a couple of options. You know what? Yeah, we'll make the Seeger. Yeah, I do have the. Uh, the power bonds. Obviously, you saw me search it. Want to go into game two? What was your face down anyway? Or do you want me to play it out? Because I'm actually just going to keep the Seeger this time. Ah, goes and match. Okay, yeah. I mean... Yeah, what did you have anyway? And what are your starters in this deck? A Nibiru. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Why don't you want to, you don't want to play it out? Well, I guess at this point it's too late anyway, but. Um, so this actually brings up an interesting point. Let's say you had flipped the Gozen match. Now, because I have Seeger on the field, my Chimera Tech Rampage is actually a dark. And so I can't use the Seeger as material to summon out the Rampage. I do, however, have a solution to that, and that's Cyber Twin Dragon. So being able to summon him out at 5,600 attack with two attacks is game anyway. But um, the Nib would have definitely kept things interesting. I do have the Nash Durana Cyber Dragon in hand. Um, discard special. I'm not playing the um, the Anaconda right now, though. And I've been going back and forth on that. I might, because if you nib me, then I can make the Link Spider and then make the Anaconda. and then. But that would mean I would also have to send the... Um, or play an Overload Fusion in deck in order to summon out another Rampage after. Yeah, I was I was definitely in pretty good shape, but that you, you definitely had a good setup though. I'm surprised you played Nib in the main deck of this deck actually, because it seems like the kind of deck where you want to have a field presence. Well, maybe not, because you do send stuff back to hand to negate. Let's have our ne next game. I want to see what happens when you have your starter. Um, yeah, I don't think I need to. I don't think I should side anyway. Let's let's keep uh, practicing with the main decks anyway. 
I don't know if I know enough about Jack. I mean, I, if we were playing like in a tournament, I would probably side in the Hate Runate against you just to try to get rid of um, all those negates or at least force you to play your negate. But I'm also not super familiar with your deck, so I don't know what your full combo looks like. <laughs> hey, what's wrong with Verte? I love Anaconda. Okay, yeah, let's let's admit it's a terribly toxic card, but I played in my Anamancipators. Well, I was playing it in Anamancipators. I think I dropped it in the most recent build, actually. Because that's the thing. I've been going back and forth with running the um, the DPE package in that deck, too. But with this one, um, with this deck, if I were to drop a Rampage for an Anaconda, I would also need to add a um, an Overload Fusion into the main deck. But the reason why I haven't is that Overload Fusion only brings out Rampage at 2100 attack, and then swinging for 63, it's just, you know, it's not enough. I would have to have something else, maybe bring out a Seeger or something and pump him up, so I guess it could work, but then I'm lowering my deck's consistency, you know. In my starting hand, I'd rather see, like, Dark Hole over, um, over another Fusion card that's not Power Bond. <laughs> yeah, but if you um if you swear um the the chat bot the auto mod is automatically going to take it out just so you know. Um I can see what you wrote but everyone else isn't going to be able to. But yeah, you're uh Yeah, you know, I, I, I have, um, I do some, some streams of kid games and stuff like that, too, so I try to, uh, try to keep it at least family friendly. I, I try not to swear on stream. Has it happened before? Yes, obviously, like, it's, it's one of those things where you, you just have to be cognizant of it, and it can be tough sometimes. I should read what these do. I don't know what's happening. Uh, at a starry night for, did you, did, you obviously didn't have full combo here, but, hmm... Um, and what does this Starry Night Ceremony do? You can reveal blah 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 if your opponent activates a card. Or in fact, you can special summon a level 7 light dragon monster from your hand, and that's a once per turn. Okay, um... That's interesting. I don't know what to do in this scenario. I just... Oh, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not in terrible shape. I'm thinking if I should play the Dark Hole or not, basically. <laughs> I'm learning to have a filter. I'm working on mine. Ah, gotcha. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just really trying to debate what would be best. Should I just go for it? Because, I mean, I, I, I just don't know enough about your deck and what you're going to be able to do as far as negates go and everything so you know what we'll go this way effect of cyberdark claw i discard it and i get to search for a cyberdark spell or trap put the realm in hand i'll activate the realm to get a search Grab a Chimera. Activate Realm's second effect to gain the extra normal summon. It is an effect that starts to change, just in case you were curious. Is the Chimera summon good? His effect is an on summon, so you can do something before I declare it. Activate his effect. Discarding is not a cost for Chimera. I will discard Dark Hole to search for Power Bond. Oh, did you think I was activating the dark hole? 
Um, I'll use my regular normal summon for the turn again on Master. Is that all right? Obviously not activating Nashter's effect, I don't have a target. I'll work on destroying your field after. I'm gonna, oops, wrong, uh, wrong zone, misclicked. I'm gonna make the Seeger, we good there? Take your time. Thinking about summoning out the, the big guy. Although you can't use Ceremony unless I activate a card. It, it has to chain to something, right? Oh, um, the only card in hand that you know of right now is my Power Bond. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do have the uh, the fusion spell. Correct. I searched it with Chimera, which gives me the ability to fuse from grave. All right. I will activate the power bond. If you pop Seeger, you mean? Yeah, it wouldn't make a difference. Um. Although you could just pop the rampage if you were going to pop anything. I'm going to use Rampage's effect to pop you two back row. Although you can change Ceremony to summon out a big guy if you have it anyway. Yeah, I thought so. Hmm, then you're going to pop the Rampage, huh? Yeah, I don't think I can do anything about that, can I? Hmm. Yep, that's gonna be it. Um. Hmm. Think, think, think. I mean, this card seems obvious, but the problem is I want to be able to keep a discard fodder for him, which I guess this is. Yeah, I, I did I did uh, have the Regeki during draw phase. I picked it up. I do main the three Regekis, the two Dark Holes, the two Lightning Storms. Unfortunately, that's gonna be it. Um, the uh, the Nashla was the only Cyber Dragon I drew this game, but that just means I have a lot of Cyber Dragons in deck and a lot of Searchers for them left. Yeah, all your effects are gonna be good. Um, he lets you search for a starry knight. Banish from, and each effect is once per turn. You can banish from from graveyard to get a to special summon a starry knight in your grave. Okay. That's all right, take your time. Um, I feel like the problem with this archetype though is that they made some of them fairies and some of them dragons. So they're, 
they're not quite as uniform, so the stuff that, that benefits either dragons or fairies isn't going to be as good in your deck as if they just had one archetype, you know? I mean, it'd be nice if fairy decks in general actually got enough support to be meta, but... I haven't gotten to see your extra deck too much yet. Let's see what you got. If you control no monsters, you can banish it from your grave to special level 7 light dragon from your hand. Seals effect, yep. Return, special the seal. Do they have a Link 1 you could summon? Although you wouldn't be able to get Seal's effect unless you had no monsters anyway. So that wouldn't work. Did you misunderstand how many monsters you were going to have on the field at the time? Yeah. Hmm. Do you have any other moves? trying to figure it out I think oh yeah gonna pop my realm that's fine I think out of the 31 cards in my deck 20 of them will give me back the OTK but I mean that also depends on what you have too if you can negate it or negate any of my effects Although, I mean, I wouldn't complain about getting a lightning storm or something like that, but at this point, I want to see a cyber dragon or a searcher for a cyber dragon. I I really don't want to see, like, small world right now, you know? I, I am playing a couple small worlds just to get that first turn and be able to swing for game, but... Oh, oh what does this guy do? Light monsters gain 500 attack and defense, and dark monsters lose 400, and when you destroy a battle card effect, target light monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Do you have any hand traps? I do have lethal if you don't. Seal edge dragon to hand and then what do you do after that? It's the level 7 dragon, right? The Starry Night Dragon. And then what would be your next move after that? A 
So, quick effect. You can target light monster you control, tribute it, and if you do special summon a light, it'll seven light dragon monster from your hand, and when the dragon comes out, he pops something, so that's a good interrupt. Um, you can banish this card from your graveyard, target a dragon, it gains a thousand attack, the end of your next turn. Okay, so you would have ended up with an interrupt, which, given this scenario, um, having the dragon pop Chimera would have ended my turn, it probably would have ended the game. Yeah, that, that would have absolutely won you the duel. I don't think I would have been... Well, you would have still had to kill me on your next turn, but I, I probably wouldn't have been able to come back. Given this hand, I did draw into the Cyber Dragon, and I already had the Power Bond. So my plan was actually to use the Chimera to pitch the Power, the power Bond for the third Power Bond and gain the ability to fuse from Grave. Yeah, that's true. I can see why that would come in handy. Alright, do you want to just have another game? This is why we test play anyway, right? Hmm. Yeah, let's ha let's play with the side deck this time. Sure, why not? I think this would be a good swap against you... I don't think he's super necessary. A lot of times what you're doing anyway is summoning out the guy, getting a pop, and then he gives you the Solemn Judgment ability off the trap too, so. The pop's a good interrupt, but it doesn't worry me too much. I could play these to get around it. But what would I take out? Honestly, this isn't as good against you. You know what, yeah, let's do it like this. I think against your deck in particular, that will help me get around your interrupt. I'm all set, and I'm gonna be going second. Did you open your starter this time? Hey. All right, let's see what you can do. I assume you've got your uh, your big negate. Now, are you playing not archetype specific negates, like Solemn Judgment, for example? Because I feel like if you're if you're playing the um, the archetype specific version of it, you may as well play the regular Solemn as well, right? Floodgates too. Yeah, that's right. You had the uh, the goals in match. It's just you never seem to have a, a lot of back row against me. You don't think your your deck's too monster heavy, do you? Oh, gotcha. I'm gonna try to hit your spells and traps with the lightning storm. Play the realm, get a search. Oh yeah. Summon limits one of the strongest traps against my deck. Like that that absolutely blows me out of the water. My only real answer is either back or removal or if I open with the power bond and the two monsters to be able to just make the the rampage right away. I can see why you would in your deck. Um, I 
I'm going to use the realm's effect to gain the extra normal summon. And then I'll activate Chimera's effect. I will discard... Honestly, that's... Uh, you know, I might actually be in better shape than I thought. Oh, no, you got something? Okay, yeah, I can wait. Correct, yes. His his effect isn't an on-summon uh, ability, so when I normal summon him, you have the option to activate an effect before I can even activate Chimera's effect. Estelle, tar tribute a light monster control, special summon level 7, dragon monster from your hand. Um, and then Starry Night Dragon's going to attempt to pop the Chimera, huh? Hmm, let me think. That does hurt a lot. Um, yeah, that's that's good. Chimera's in grave. Um I wonder what else you might have. Right, yeah. Oof. So, can you summon him out a bunch of times in a turn? Because that would be pretty cool. Just make him like a super DPE almost. And he does benefit from all the dragon support. So, like, I can understand why you would build him in Serenade, but have you tried playing him in just the dragon deck? Or with dragon support as opposed to Star Knight support? Because, like, you, you don't have to necessarily be limited by all the Starry Night stuff. He, he can go with Light stuff, he can go with Dragon stuff, he's got all kinds of, of other support that he can be playing with. I'm going to Normal Summon Nashter um, and activate its effects targeting my Chimera Engrave. Oh, just the two of them? Yeah, I suppose you don't need the, the whole deck. You could just play, like, the good stuff out of it. Huh. So, uh, Nashter specials the, uh, the Chimera, and it locks me into the machines for this turn. I'm unfamiliar with the deck, but if I come up with any good ideas, I'll shoot you a message. We can definitely play play test some stuff tonight, if you're a, if you're up for it. Um, I'm hoping you don't have a hand trap because I think I still have lethal, but it depends what else you can do. I'm gonna make the seeger, and now that I have a cyber dragon engraved, I can play the repair plant and get a search. Is the repair plant good? Oh, really? Yeah, no, that's that's the thing with my deck. Like I said, usually you have to have at least two ways to stop me. Otherwise, I, I typically will have game. Um, in this case, what would be the best option? I think getting the court hand is probably going to be best. That way I could set up the grave just in case you had something. But I did hard draw the, uh, one of the power bonds anyway. So I have core in hand with Seeger on fields. So even though I can't fuse from Grave, I still have it anyway. Still have the Rampage at 42 with three attacks once I uh, use his effect. What did you have in hand, anything good? I did have the Red Reboot. 
I thought about not lightning storming you or just lightning storming the monsters, but I was afraid that if I lightning stormed, you were going to have like a solemn or something, so I wanted to save the red reboot just in case you didn't let it go through. And like, oh yeah, the, the droplet and the Estelle. So, Estelle contribute herself to summon out the big dragon, right? Which means Estelle itself is an interrupt. Well, I guess you have to have the dragon in hand for her to work. Hmm. Um, what's that dragon card that searches two? Is is Starry Dragon able to be searched off of it? It's called like, uh, was it Melody of a, of Awakening Dragon? No, it's not. Um, that it, it, it's the dragon card. You discard a card and then you get two searches. Blue Eyes decks play it. I I can't remember what the uh, what the limits are on it. It's like, uh, is it 2,500 or more attack and 25 or less defense, or is it 3,000 attack or more? I can't remember what you're supposed to, because I wasn't sure if we could search Starry Knight. Because that would be interesting. Although, I think that you should at least be playing a Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon, right? Um, I do have a Discord that I didn't finish, um, setting up, so let me get that all situated and squared away, and then I'll, uh, I'll send it to you. What's, what's your name on Discord so I can add it to you once I've got that all situated? I got a pen around here somewhere, or I can just type it. Yeah, that would be awesome. What's your, uh, what's your Discord username? Let me open up a notepad. Master Starly hashtag 3500. Okay. Yeah, let me get all that squared away and then I'll add you later. And if you want, um, later on tonight, once I'm back on, we could, uh, we could play test some more. I would offer to play test against something different, but I don't have a lot of decks built on dueling book right now. So let me put some stuff together and then if you want, we can, uh, you can test play against other decks that don't win or lose on turn one, you know? Hello. I gotta tell you, this this deck, wicked fun to play at locals. Uh, it, it's so funny when you summon, when you're, uh, when you lose the dice roll, or you win the dice roll, and you're like, I'll go second, and your opponent just goes, oh, great, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I haven't tried Dueling Nexus, I don't think. Um, maybe I'll give that one a shot at some point, too. But um, it is just about 5.30 here, so I do got to get going, make dinner for the family and all that stuff. I'll be back on probably around 9 o'clock, so I'll see your message then. Oh, it's automatic. Oh, nice. Yeah, because YGO Pro, I definitely miss playing some YGO Pro and being able to... Um, to not have to click every single thing and tell every card where to go, you know. But yeah, thanks for the games. I'll catch you later. And thanks everybody else for tuning in. We'll be back tonight, probably shortly after 9 o'clock, for some more games. I'll try to have some other decks built. I might put together, um, I'll put together Adam Spaders, I think, because I've been testing it with the Prank Kids engine, and it's, it's super solid, because either normal summoning or just excavating a prank at Roxy's gives you full combo, so I want to at least showcase some of that. But the Cyber Dragon deck, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Just being able to normal summon Cyber Dragon Core and put 12,600 damage on the field, 
is really good. I mean, it, it might not be the best in the current format just because every popular hand trap this these days are hand traps that are good against this deck. Your Effect Failure, your Ash Blossom, your Ghost Ogre, your, uh, your Infinite Impermanence, that's basically everything that the deck is weak against. But besides that, the Cyberdark stuff really, really made this deck come together. So as long as you can either play around a couple of hand traps or if your opponent's not playing them or just doesn't draw them then you can usually win on your first turn and if anybody's got any ideas of how i can make the deck better i'm always open to um always open to advice i um i've got it right here in case anybody wanted to um to steal some ideas from it um for those of you who missed it the small world links um small world just gets you to your core because your core is the one card otk small world plus any of the cyber dragons um, will banish the chimera from deck and then grab your core so drawing into small world will always get you your otk um, there are some other ways to get to the otk such as if you obviously hard open the um the power bond or if you hard open the realm then you can just normal summon the core bait out the hand trap and then go into full combo anyway um and my reasonings for some of the, for some of these picks in the extra deck, I do want to rework it. Um, I want to play Twin Twisters to not have to deal with Mystic Minds. Maybe I'll put those in now. I, I was only playing the Kaiju just because it almost feels like you have to in Cyber Dragons, but realistically, it's probably not the best idea. I don't really need the third Darkhold. Darkhold is very good against the Adventure Package, though, so I may put that back in. But I just find Hatrune to be really useful. The Battle Faders, because this deck hates going up against other OTKs. This stuff is um, all against the um, the Flanderies, which this deck struggles with very badly. Um, I, I have a lot of Eldritch players at my local, so I do put in the evenly matched to have to deal with those. And then obviously wanting to, to handle Mystic Mine is a pretty big concern of mine. But yeah, thank you guys for joining me. We'll be back later. Um, Hope to see some of you there, and if anybody wants to play, just shoot me a message in chat. I'd be more than happy to have a few test games. All right, have a good one, everyone.